Hey, I'm Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Today I'm gonna make a ridiculous cereal machine. I wanted to make a base to hold this contraption at an angle so the cereal would fall towards the opening. I made a couple of simple ramps with some pine and cut them out on the table saw and the bandsaw. Then I laid them out on another piece of pine and figured out how wide the piece needed to be just to hold the container and cut it out on the table saw. Since I cut these freehand, they weren't exactly even, so I lined up the bottom edge, clamped them together, and then flattened the top edge with a belt sander. Added some glue, and then just put together this little ramp. I ended up making another one of these later that was taller to lift the opening off of the table, so you could put a bowl in front of it. Next, I cut down a piece of PVC pipe to match the interior height of my container, and then drew some corkscrew marks on the bottom. I spun the piece as I was pushing it through the bandsaw just to try to match those cuts. They weren't perfect, but it got the job done. I used some flexible styrene to cut two pieces to use as propellers. They are about the same size, and I just had to play with them until they fit in the slots correctly. I just used some CA glue to hold these in place. It makes it pretty permanent. I dropped this down to the bottom and figured out how much I needed to trim off so it could spin freely. I bored out the inside of this with the largest drill bit that I had, and really just had to make sure that a dowel rod could be able to spin freely on the inside. I flipped the container and found the placement for the propeller, and this showed me where to drill the hole. I drilled the hole and then transferred it to my ramp below. Then from that transfer mark, I drilled a hole through the wood, and a hole through the bottom of the dowel rod. Before I attached all that, I needed to make an opening for the cereal to come out of, so I used a scrap piece of aluminum and drew a rectangle. I cut this out with a cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool and then cleaned up the opening with just a utility knife. I drove a screw up through the ramp into the plastic container and then threaded on the dowel rod. This gave me a post to hold the propeller. Then I drove another screw into the back of the container to lock it all together. I used a scrap piece of Lexan to effectively make a door jam for my aluminum door. I traced out the opening and cut it out on the bandsaw. The container this is going on is rounded, so I had to heat this up with the heat gun and I used some needle nose pliers to give it a point to bend at. There was a lot of trial and error here, but I had to fit it with the aluminum door behind it. Once I was happy with that, I held it in place and drilled some holes for some pop rivets. I had to make sure to get pop rivets that were long enough to go through both pieces of plastic with the aluminum there as a spacer. I popped these off and then tested to make sure that the door would still move. It did, so I scribed where the top was and then used that as a bend point with just a piece of wood. Then I marked a little handle. I cut out this handle with a bandsaw. You can cut aluminum on most woodworking tools. I sanded down the cut edge and then made sure that it could open and close. I cut a scrap piece of wood and added some CA glue and then knocked this down inside my propeller. I added some more glue to the top to harden it up and then drilled a hole right in the center of it. This fit the post on the stepper motor. I dropped it onto my post and figured out where to drill a hole for the stepper motor post to drop through. All right, let's look at the electronics. It's really simple. A button makes a motor turn, but let me show you what I got. We have an Arduino Uno right here with a motor shield on it and a micro switch. This is just a little button. I've got the button connected through a breadboard. This will be taken out eventually, but for right now, this is a prototype circuit and it works. Basically, you push the button and that makes the motor turn while the button is being held. I pressed the post of the motor through the hole in the lid into the propeller and then traced the outside of it. This helped me figure out where to drill holes to mount it to the top. I drilled those holes and then drove in some screws from the bottom side to mount the motor. Finally, I pressed on the propeller and then dropped the top onto the container. Next, I had to mount the switch, so I opened the door to its full open position and then pressed the switch against it and made two marks. At these marks, I drilled two holes and then I used some plastic automotive rivets and dropped them into the holes, ran the post through the switch and into the back of the rivets. This holds the switch just fine once they're all the way tight. I used some hot glue to mount the Arduino to the top of the container because this is just temporary. And then I soldered up the wires to go to the switch all the way up to the Arduino. The switch attaches with just two wires and then it was ready to test out. Open the door and the switch makes the propeller turn. Then it was time to test it with some cereal or goldfish here. I was surprised to see that it actually works pretty well. I found it was easier to refill by not taking the propeller all the way out of the container, so I just opened it, filled it back up, and closed it again. This worked well, and I wanted to make sure that gravity wasn't doing all the work, so I unplugged it, and nothing came out. 
All right, before we talk about this thing, let me tell you really quickly about Kalo. They're sponsoring this video and they make these really awesome silicone wedding bands. They're awesome for a lot of reasons, but today let's talk about the athletic side of it. I wear mine all the time, but especially when I'm swimming or running, my wife wears hers when she plays roller derby so she doesn't have metal on her hand. These things are safe and far more comfortable and they're cheaper in case you mess up your ring. Case in point, I lost my original wedding band in the ocean when I was surfing and I felt horrible about it. If I had lost this, not really that big of a deal. Be sure to go check them out, kalorang.com, and if you click the share button in the top of their website, you get $5 off. Thanks, Kalo. Okay, let's talk about this thing. Of course, I'm not gonna actually use this thing in my house, probably, but really, it was just an excuse to see if I could figure out how to do it. The idea for this came from someone named Mark in the comments of one of my other videos just a couple of days after one of my kids accidentally dumped an entire box of Cheerios onto the floor of our kitchen. So I figured, hey, it's worth a shot. I thought it would be pretty simple, but once I actually started trying to put it together, I found that there were a bunch of things to figure out. One was how to keep it sealed. It's not perfectly sealed this way, but there's no big openings for animals to crawl in and out, and that's kind of a big thing. Another thing is how to get a machine to actually push these out. The specific cereal that you choose has a lot to do with how hard that is because different cereals are different weights, different sizes, they kind of interact differently, they cause different amounts of friction, stuff like that. So I ended up just picking some goldfish because they were there and kind of easy to deal with. Something big and chunky like frosted mini wheats would probably be harder to deal with. Something small and light like Rice Krispies would probably be easier to deal with. Honestly, never thought I'd be talking about cereal in these videos. I also had to figure out how to trigger this whole thing. Originally, I wanted to have a panel down here where you push the bowl up to it and that would cause the switch to go. But the problem there is that then you have to automatically open the door. I could have opened and closed the door with the servo, but then that would be working against the gravity and all the weight of the cereal that was trying to come out. I may go back and try that in the future, but at this point, it didn't really matter. One of the other things I got to try for the first time, oddly, was using a stepper motor. I had never actually built anything with a stepper motor, so I bought a really cheap motor controller and a reasonably cheap stepper motor to try out. Turns out it's really easy to use and control with an Arduino. Anyway, I had a lot of fun making this. I know it's really silly and not practical, but I'm trying to do more of that stuff just so I can learn. I hope you like this one, and if you have comments or questions, leave them down in the comments below, or if you have an awesome idea for how to do something similar to this, I would love to see it. I've got lots of other videos for you to check out, podcasts and live streams and all sorts of stuff. Everything I do is at ilike to make stuff.com. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.